Well, good morning. Welcome to the Blair Congregational Church. I'm Pastor Jim. And yes, we love to tell the story. It's the second week in 2021. We're so happy you've joined us here online. We're staying safe. We're keeping you safe. We want everyone to get through this COVID thing in the best way possible. So thank you for joining in online with us. It's a beautiful Sunday morning, a great time to be praising God. And we're here coming to you from the Blair Church in Blair, Nebraska. First thing we have this morning is our call to worship. Come, let us worship God, our light and our salvation. We, we come, come to sing God's, God's praise. Come, let us worship God, our shelter and protector. God's voice shakes the wilderness. We give glory and praise to our great God. God blesses the people with peace. God, God gives us strength in our weakness. Come, Come let us worship God. God. And please enjoy our first hymn this morning. It's going to be hymn number nine. Praise ye the Lord, ye heavens adore him. And now this morning's prayer of invocation. Eternal Father, who at the baptism of Jesus revealed him to be your Son, anointing him with the Holy Spirit, grant to us, who are born again by water and the Spirit, that we may be faithful to our calling as your adopted children. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. At this time, one of the things we do when we come together as a family is we share and we continue to appreciate your support of our church. Even though we are not gathering together, we are still celebrating together. We're here with you this morning and keeping the church going is so very important. So if you wish to, please remember us with your offerings during this time also. You can drop them off on Wednesday afternoons when we're here during office hours, or mail them to our P.O. box. Shall we take a moment of prayer? Father, we thank you for the opportunity to give, the opportunity to continue building your kingdom here on earth. We thank you for these times together, where we can be together whether we're in the same place or apart. We ask you to bless the gifts that we send, and bless us as the good stewards of all that you give. In your most holy name we pray this morning. Amen. And now please enjoy our second hymn today. It's going to be hymn number 172, Tell Me the Story of Jesus.
Our first reading this morning is from the book of Genesis, chapter 1, verses 1 through 5. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And God said, Let there be light, and there was light. And God saw the light, that it was good, and God divided the light from, from the darkness. And God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And the evening and the morning were the first day. May the Lord bless this reading with understanding. Our gospel reading this morning is from the Gospel of Mark. We're going to be in the first chapter, beginning in the fourth verse, and I invite all who are able to please stand for this morning's gospel reading. And so, John the Baptist appeared in the wilderness, preaching a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. The whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem went out to him, confessing their sins. They were baptized by him in the Jordan River. John wore clothing made of camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. And this was his message. After me comes one more powerful than I, the straps of whose sandals I am not worthy to stoop down and untie. I baptize you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. At that time, Jesus came from Nazareth and Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. Just as Jesus was coming up out of the water, he saw heaven being torn open and the Spirit descending on him like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, whom I love. With you, I am well pleased. The Word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. And please be seated. A boy told his father, Dad, if three frogs were sitting on a limb that hung over a pool, and one frog decided to jump off into the pool, how many frogs would be left on the limb? And the dad replied, two. Nope, said the son. There are three frogs, and one decides to jump. How many are left? And the dad said, oh, I get it. If one decides to jump, the others would too. So there are none left. And the boy said, no, Dad, the answer is three. The frog only decided to jump. Does that sound like a New Year's resolution that anybody's ever made before? Great inspiration and great resolutions can happen every year, but oftentimes we only decide to try them, and months later we're still out on that limb we haven't done them, so I'm in there too, so it's not anything that anybody else has done that I haven't done also. When I was growing up, making New Year's resolutions was a given for just about everyone I knew. It was a time of beginning, a time for setting out our new sights, a time for hope and new hope with the new year that we just came into. Each year provides for a new start. We have new resolutions, new objectives, and new opportunities that we want to take advantage of throughout the year. And it's in the opportunities that come the most important things during this new year. We're all given all types of opportunities each day, and how we handle and accept those opportunities is so very important as we move through the new year. Reset button. I love having a reset button. If you've been here for our filmings, we use the reset button quite often. So many things go on. There's a reset button on our telephones, our computers, and all sorts of other electronic equipment, even in the model trains I have. There's reset buttons on some of the parts in there, too. The reset button places the item back in the original factory settings, where all things are right back to where they started, back when it was first created. By doing this, many of the problems that are have, we're having with those things have been resolved. And we get off to another clean start with all of that equipment. God gives us the ability to restart each year also when we start our new years. We've just celebrated his son's birth. We remember all the wonderful stories we talked about. And it's an exciting time with decorations, beautiful decorations everywhere, gatherings. 
and a time of year where many people are just a little bit nicer as the season goes on. A time of year where God gets a bigger presence in our lives also. Gets a bigger presence. One where we move maybe just a little closer to him. Where we hear great stories that he's left for us to hear and understand and learn from. Where we look to become a little more knowledgeable about God. And when we think of those changes, we saw such a change in a story from 1843. So 1843, and it was written by Charles Dickens back in the day. A man on Christmas Eve was given the opportunity to change his life so he would not end up and bound up in long chains. A reset button for him. He was reminded of times past. He was given an insight into the current day. He was shown what a glimpse of life may be in the upcoming year. And with all these happenings in vision, he was given a chance to reset his life. And by the end of the story, he did change his life. He made those changes. He was still rich. He still owned a business that made money. He still had a clerk. He still had his past, just as it happened. But now the future could be changed. A reset to the positive. He would be doing things that God would be very happy with. And God was happy about as he did those things. And my friends, as we think about it, we don't need visits from three spirits. We can make changes and adjustments to our lives just by following God's word. And God's son just a little bit closer as we move along. Living a hopeful and loving life just as Jesus did. Jesus' words and teachings give us great direction on how we should be, how we should act. How to approach things, along with Jesus being the supreme example of what love is all about. As we start 2021, we can look back at 2020 and all the incredible changes that took place and none of us could have imagined back at that point. Back in March of last year, the economy was rolling along. We were all out and about doing all sorts of things. Everyone was looking forward to spring and better weather and getting together with friends. And then it all changed. We no longer could visit folks as we had done in the past. We could no longer eat out at our favorite restaurants. We could not have major surgeries or procedures unless it was very urgent. Very different look at that too. We were told to wear masks and keep away from others, at least six feet. The economy seemed seemingly stopped and our lives changed. So things happened back in those days. Something called COVID-19 had arrived and wreaked havoc pretty much in all aspects of our life that now we're finally starting to get away from a little bit because it is now 2021. The reset button has been hit. A vaccine is available and starting to be used. So we hear about that rolling out all around our country. Hope has made an appearance once more. And we ought to enjoy Christmas in new and different ways. And with that reset button now being pressed, a new year is dawn and we can make those changes or make resolutions that we may have been very difficult making in the past year. And when we think of resolutions, I found a list of the top 10 resolutions. See if any of these sound familiar to you. Spend more time with family and friends, number one. Number two, fit in some fitness, taking care of our health and exercising. Number three, taming the bulge, that diet thing. We all work on that. Quit smoking. And if we think about smokers, on average, it takes four tries to really make the break from smoking before they quit it for good. So we're behind them all the way. Number five, enjoying life more and all the different things. Number six, quit drinking. Could be adult beverages or sugary ones also. Number seven, getting out of debt. And this is one we might not make in a year, but we can start making that happen and improving our lives, getting out of some of that debt. Number eight, learning something new. You might say, why? I've got enough to do without taking on something else, but learning is always fun. Seeing something new is always fun. Maybe getting to God would be much more fun too, learning more about his love and his son as we move along this year. Number nine, Helping others, a resolution to help others. And that's thinking of someone else for a change instead of ourselves when we make that resolution. So a very good one to have on our list. 
And number 10, getting organized. Some may say, I've never been organized, why start now? Because it is a good thing to do, it will make your life a lot better when you can find things. When we look at these top 10 resolutions, each and every one of them, none of them had anything to do with spiritual or faith improvements. God wasn't included in any of those. And those are the top 10 from almost everywhere. And sadly, it's that way with most people. They don't include God or Christ in the picture of their lives. And let me suggest to you that the Lord should be included in every aspect of our life. Should be included each and every place in our marriage, family, children, friends, work, play and pleasure. He should be right up there with all the other things we do, remembering him and keeping him in mind. He could be a little bigger part of our lives as we go through the years. And it is 2021 after all, so we can make that happen. So this morning, here's some good solid advice for making the new year better. I have three things this morning. The new year, being careful. Number two, the new year, being thoughtful. Number three, the new year, being thankful. We'll start with the new year, being careful. Be careful in living. Be careful in the way you live. Just be careful. Be wise in all your dealings. Be careful with your time, because that's also God's time. Don't contribute to evil. Be wise. Be the bigger person. Seek the Lord's will in all things, every day in every way. We can think of how he'd want us to respond. What would Jesus do? A great way to look at that. Because God is always there, Jesus is always there for us, and willing to be a bigger part of our daily lives. Welcome them in more than ever. Number two, the new year, be thoughtful. Be thoughtful of others. And that's always good advice when you put others in there too. And be thoughtful of God's spirit who lives within each and every one of us. That wonderful inspiration, the Holy Spirit, who, if we listen, will provide that inspiration to follow God's will in our lives will inspire us to be more thoughtful of others and will help us with that ability to make the most of the opportunities that come our way to help others and to be there for others, to be there for others whenever needed. All these things enhancing our spiritual and our faith journeys. Be thoughtful. Number three, the new year, be thankful. Be thankful in Christ. Keep him in mind. Live a grateful life that will keep you on the straight and narrow, being grateful. People who are not aware of their blessings are not thankful. They don't really see it. Instead, they're always looking for more. We don't want to be there. A positive, thankful person is a great witness, witness in this dark world, and we heard where the light came into the world just a little while ago in our Christmas time. We only shine when we are truly thankful for what we have. Our light shines for the Lord when we are thankful and we live it and express it in what we do. Because if you think about it, we'd much rather hear someone saying things like, bless the Lord, or thank you, Lord, or praise the Lord, rather than complaining. Complaints are easy. They just flow right out. But thinking of God takes just that. Thinking and keeping God close at all times in our lives. I'm convinced that a grateful person a thankful person will live a better life and be blessed with a better life. Good things because they see the good things. They look for the good things. And they find those good things. Do you want a better life in the new year? Be polite to God. Be quick to praise Him and thank Him for every little blessing you receive. The blessing is something you see during the day. Maybe the blessing just having another day here in the world that He's given to us. Thank Him for the resolutions and help with those resolutions that not only help us, but praise him and make his world a better place to live for others. So today, in closing, someone said, last year when I called my parents to wish them a happy new year, my dad answered the phone. Well, dad, what's your new year's resolution, I asked him. To make your mother as happy as I can all year, 
He answered proudly. Then Mom got on the phone. And I said, Mom, what's your resolution? To see that your dad keeps his resolution. The reset button has been pushed. God would certainly like to see us keep great resolutions and great things in our lives. He knows the way to being blessed. Walking with the Lord. Doing his way. Gives us those blessings. So be careful. Be thoughtful. Be thankful. Resolve to make 2021 a great year. A year where we are those folks for others. Be that person. A year where we improve our lives, maybe with some of those resolutions. Maybe one, maybe all, who knows. A year where we keep God a bit closer. Understanding him a little bit better. And maybe even learning a little more about his son. And that love that was sent here for each and every one of us. And we should also let his spirit, inspiration, move us forward in our faith and spiritual journeys. All gifts given to us. Not only at Christmas, but through the entire year. God loves you. Enjoy the year 2021. Amen. And this morning, as we become our church in time of prayer, let's take a moment of that silent prayer. Prayer directly to God, who wants to hear from us, who's there for us. Father, we come to you this morning in praise and thanksgiving for the reset button that you give us each and every year, for that reset button we have right now into the year 2021. We thank you for allowing us to have resolutions, for helping us to keep those resolutions and make improvements to ourselves, our world, and those around us. We come to you in praise and thanksgiving for the beauty of the season that we just got to enjoy, for the beauty of this time together, even though we may be apart, we're still together in spirit with you each and every week. We thank you for those opportunities you put before us as we go through our lives to be that person, to be there for someone else, to be that inspiration, to be all, to all sorts of different people. We thank you for these things, and we praise you for trusting us with your will, with your love to spread that throughout our world. And Lord, we know we can come to you with our joys and our concerns. And this morning, Lord, we do lift up our concerns to you. We lift up those from our silent prayers. We lift up those going through tough times. We lift up those whose prayers are known only to you. We lift those up, Lord, who are suffering in silence. And we also pray for those, Lord, and lift up to you the ones who have no voice, that we will be a voice for them. We ask you to be with all our first responders and those helping others to get through these tough times, through this COVID, and through a time where we have to be apart. We thank you for each and every one of them and all of their efforts and all the things they do for us and for others. And Lord, we lift up our joys this morning, joys we spoke of a little bit ago, and the joys of our time together, the beauty of the music, the beauty of the words, the beauty of you sending your son to be here with us. We thank you for all of these things, and we especially thank you for our Lord Jesus Christ, whom we now bring to you the words that he left us to pray to you. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And now please enjoy our closing hymn, hymn number 369, O Jesus, I Have Promised.
reset button's been pushed. The year is 2021. We have the new opportunities to get to know God better, to do his will, and to be the people that he wants us to be. And now may God bless us every day of our lives in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.